hydralazine, trade name aprezoline. The indication for this medication is hypertension. The way it works is it's actually an arterial vasodilator. And I want you to remember that it's an arterial vasodilator because we're going to talk about this later and why this is so important. So therapeutic class is antihypertensive. Pharmacologic class is vasodilator. We get this medication a lot in the neuro ICU because a lot of these patients can develop severe hypertension or, or you might see like hypertensive crisis come in. And so we may give hydralazine. You might have hydralazine for BP, systolic blood pressure greater than, you know, 180. So hydralazine is a common medication given for hypertension because we can give it IV and it can bring the blood pressure down quickly. Remember, it's an arterial vasodilator. One of the side effects of this is that it can cause tachycardia. I want you to think about that really quickly. I want you to think about for just one second why this would cause tachycardia. Remember we said this is an arterial vasodilator. So our arteries are going to vasodilate, right? What is our biggest artery in the body? The biggest artery, artery is our aorta. So as blood is coming out of our left ventricle, it's going to go first through the aorta out into the body. So as we give hydralazine, it's going to cause our aorta to vasodilate. Now our heart is okay with that, but it needs to compensate. It wants to keep our cardiac output the same. So in order to keep cardiac output the same, it is going to start beating faster. All right. We have a, our aorta gets bigger. So the blood, the heart needs to pump quicker to fill that space and get the same amount of blood coming out of the heart. That's what it wants to do. It wants to keep cardiac output and tissue perfusion, everything the same that it was. So we make our aorta bigger. We have to increase the rate to keep that going the same. So we really need to keep that in mind. If you have a patient who is hypertensive and tachycardic already, giving them the uh, hydralazine may cause their heart rate to even climb up more and then will it be in the case where we're giving the toprol or something to lower heart rate again. It can also cause sodium retention, arrhythmias, and angina. You need to monitor your blood pressure closely. So you don't just want to give this to your patient. You don't want to take your 8 o'clock vitals and say, okay, uh, systolic blood pressure was 190. I'm going to give them 10 milligrams of hydralazine IV right now and then never come back to check the blood pressure again until midnight. You want to make sure that it worked, first of all, and you also want to make sure it didn't do too much and bring their blood pressure down too far. You need to instruct the patient on how to take their own blood pressure. If they end up on hydralazine, oral hydralazine when they go home, you want them to understand how to take the blood pressure and why it's important that they monitor it really closely. Last thing you want to keep in mind here is that you want to use caution with MAOIs. All right, this is a really important medication to know. This is one that you will see often. A lot of patients will be on oral uh, hydralazine at home, and a lot of patients in the hospital are going to end up getting PRN hydralazine IV for systolic blood pressure. That is hydralazine. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know. This has been another episode of the MedMaster Podcast by NRSNG.com. To get our free cheat sheet covering the 50 most commonly prescribed medications, head over to NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. That's NRSNG.com slash 50 meds. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for being part of the NRSNG family. We're here to help you succeed in nursing school and in life. So start your journey today over at nrsng.com slash 50 meds. We're glad to have you aboard. You know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing, y'all.